um, acceleration at 100, uh, 100 inches per minute squared and that was at 150 um, inches per minute and we, uh, we can see that the, uh, the gantry is perfectly capable of going in this direction back and forth with a very very high um, acceleration number. Uh, furthermore, I think it's uh, good to to understand that that when we were jogging, you noticed that it would would go from one place to another very quickly. We had the acceler we had the velocity at 750 inches per minute, and you can see that the uh, gantry uh, and the motors did not stall um, at all when it was going through its um, its change in uh, in jog or or position. You'll also want to note that. Um, while it was doing those very quick jogs, even though that we, we have a gantry uh, mounted tube, it, um, it stayed on position quite well. You can see that we could draw a straight line right through that. You can see that it's pretty square, everything is square, everything, all the corners are very sharp, they're not rounded at all, and this is working in constant velocity under Mach. So um, it is actually keeping its velocity constant. I also want to show um, how the, the laser tube is mounted in the gantry. The laser tube is mounted with these two mounts, which is a very durable and sturdy mount. It's not going to change its, um, its position at all. Uh, and we have it with a secondary positioner inside of the tube that has these four screws positioning this inner, inner piece here. Like I said in, in some of the forums that wood uh, t keeps its shape over a, a very wide range of temperatures and uh, wood is not going to um, cause any problem with with a um, uh, with deformation in any in any way with regard to temperature this is wood is actually better in uh, uh, the coefficients of linear expansion is actually lower than um, many many other materials including metals and plastics that includes aluminum, stainless steel, steel, iron, all of these metals have much higher uh, um, um, coefficient of linear expansion. You'll also notice that the rails are incredibly sturdy. The, we have, um, have V-group bearings that are an industry standard uh, mechanism to use for linear rails. We are using aluminum, which is a very nice soft surface, and this is not going to have any load on the aluminum. Even if, if, if that wouldn't even be a problem anyway, even with our CNC machines, we don't have that problem. We might have a little bit of cold rolling on the edges, but that actually makes the, the rails smoother. And those two comments that I just made are in response to a couple of comments that was made on the, by, on the internet that the tube is actually taped to the gantry, and we can see that the, there is no tape um, from the tube to the gantry, it's only used as mounting brackets and appropriate mounting brackets that will not deform under uh, different temperatures. Uh, also that uh, the sharp corners are, um, are a, a product of having a high acceleration and an appropriate velocity. And the, I just wanted to make sure that this was covering the comment that stated laser cutters are all about extreme acceleration and speed so you can cut corners properly, and that is correct. And we are, um, in fact, using very high acceleration, and it is, we're using an acceleration that is appropriate for do it using lasers. And in fact, the, the marking that you saw was actually done at a much higher speed than what um, lasers usually mark um, that are considered gantry lasers. Additionally, there was another comment that was along the same lines of um, using the tube on gantry that the tube will be too heavy for the gantry and I want to respond to that uh, the, which I've actually I've already responded to and the question or the comment was a gantry mounted tube design is not something I should have to debate your acceleration will be cut to a tiny fraction of what it should be which will force painfully slow cuts or corner rounding and I just want to reiterate that as you've seen on video that that's, that is not the case the acceleration is at an incredibly high amount, in, in fact, much higher than uh, generally CNC machines are, are set at. So we can get that very nice corner on the uh, squares and triangles. And we, we wanted to do triangles because we wanted to show it an even more drastic corner. Um,
so it can prove that sort of uh, that that function of the of the laser. I would like to also address the uh, comment that was uh, made regarding alignment problems, um, and one of the reasons why we put the laser tube on the gantry in the first place was because we only have to deal with alignment for one axis. We don't have to deal with alignment for um, the the X and the Y because then you have a, a little bit more of a challenge having to um, deal with uh, the tube being stationary and having to deal with a uh, two moving um, uh, mirrors. These two would be moving away from each other and these two mirrors are moving away from each other. In this particular um, uh, configuration, I only have two mirrors moving away from each other or moving closer to each other, which only requires an alignment along the this position and this position after you've gotten aligned to that position. In a uh, stationary um, tube, you have to align for all of the points in the um, the square area of the of the uh, of the machine, which includes you have to align it for this uh, for the far corner position. You have to align it for this position. You have to align it for this position. You have to align it for almost all of the positions inside. Um, and then you also have to make sure that the alignment is not drifting within the laser. Um, uh, mirror system itself during that whole process, so it takes a little bit of time to to um, to align a, a stationary uh, tube. And my aim was to actually make it a lot easier to align and a lot safer uh, for that point. And this could be aligned by anybody, and it's and we use the same technique as the other ones do. We use just a, a piece of uh, thermal paper, and then we. Uh, we make sure it's shooting at the, at the center spot of the, of the mirrors, and then we fi finally make sure it's sending, um, sending the laser to this center point, and then finally out, the, out of the, the, um, the, uh, the nozzle. We have many points of, of ways you can align the mirrors. We have this, which allows the mirror to turn this way. We also have these two that allows the mirror to turn in the vertical and horizontal position. Same thing with this. Uh, in most, what I, the comments that I've gotten from most people in the stationary glass tube um, function is that it takes, it may take an entire evening or it may take multiple hours to do a, uh, an alignment for the mirrors on a stationary glass tube. But when you have the glass tube on the gantry, it took us a maximum of 15 minutes to be able to do all of the alignment, which aligns for the entire area of the, of the, um, of the, uh, the work area, and that really only considers the alignment from this position to this position. And as a final um, idea on why we put the glass tube on the gantry, it's because this is really not the only laser system we're going to be designing. We're going to be designing laser systems that have gantry travel of very long distances. So having the power source of the laser on the gantry ensures that you have the maximum power of the laser at whatever lengths that you would like to, um, to, uh, to cut or engrave. On the forum of Wired, um, uh, the, the particular post they had up uh, noted that one of, the, one of the, uh, the posters, I don't know how valid this poster is, but if you don't have the air assist on, yes, the products underneath can catch on fire. We have an air assist that brings air to the inside of the nozzle and it's constantly spraying air out onto this area. And from what I gather on that, um, on, on that particular comment, the fire occurred because the air assist was not on or was not um, um, being used at the time of that particular uh, routing. Um, it would be good for somebody to clarify that, but every, every flare-up that we have, which is very minimal, if we may have many flare-ups, but we can't see them because it's, it's extinguished um, immediately as it is created. As you can see from the videos, we are constantly um, uh, lasering uh, cardboard and you don't see any flare-ups because there are, there is there's constant stream of air coming out of the nozzle. And we're going to do a demonstration of actually, you know, putting a match under there and see how quickly the flame is actually extinguished when we do that.
All right, now we're going to take an ordinary match and we're going to put it underneath that. It's not a huge flame, uh, but we'll see how quickly it does uh, extinguish the flame. All right, let's get a pretty good flame going here. It's completely extinguished right when I put it underneath the nozzle. Let's do that again. Let's use two of them this time. completely um, extinguishes the flame even before I even get it underneath it. Um, so we can see that air assist is generally a good idea when we're, when we're cutting out any flammable material and it will extinguish the flames. That being said, always err the side of caution because anything can happen with the, with the laser, laser system. You always want to supervise the laser and make sure that there aren't any great flare-ups happening and, and your air assist is working correctly um, and make sure that um, they are extinguished. Uh, make sure you have a fire extinguisher next to your, your laser. This is a laser. It doesn't really matter what material is on the outside. Sure, if this thing explodes, then uh, the, the wood will catch on fire. Um, if you have any, uh, any concerns about it, you can always put some kind of fire retardant spray or something on the, uh, on the inside. Um, if you wanted to paint it or something like that on the inside, you can. You have no problem doing that. It will not affect the, the working of the machine. Our business at BuildYourCNC.com is based on an ethos of experimentation, and we've built a really big community on this sort of ethos and and uh, the way we do work. We feel pretty strongly about the uh, the the methods and innovations that we implement in our machines. And we always do a lot of design and a lot of testing before we actually uh, make this available to the public. In addition to having this ethos of, of, uh, of experimentation, our business also revolves around doing things that we thought were ridiculous. For example, we uh, make CNC machines out of, with roller chain. It was never done before, but now there's a whole community doing that now. Uh, we also make huge CNC machines, 6 feet by uh, 12 feet, sometimes 14 feet for the boat builders, um, out of wood. And wood, if designed correctly, will work really well as a CNC machine. Even I thought those ideas were ridiculous at, um, when I was actually implementing them, because I thought if nobody else was doing it, then it must be ridiculous. But when I did it, it actually worked, and it worked well. Um, and people caught on to the idea, and hopefully people will catch on to the idea of, of doing radical things with, with, um, um, with ideas and innovation with uh, um, products such as laser, laser, uh, laser cutter and engraver using this method of putting the glass tube on the, the gantry and uh, making it so we can move forth to, to much better products and much more interesting products and products that work really well. In fact, we are actually applying for a provisional patent on this particular um, process and method uh, because we really think it's a novel idea. There is a patent that is out there right now that, um, that is very similar, but we're looking to see if, there's, um, um, if we have the ability to patent using the glass tube and the laser power on the gantry and see if uh, we have a problem. Uh, we have a, a possibility with that. So hopefully we will be able to get um, to get to this uh, to make this innovation possible for the cottage industry and the hobbyists and the DIYers out there. So um, that's the, so those are the really the people that um, that aren't don't have these types of machines in their reach, and we would like to uh, provide that for them. Thank you.